Thank you. Maggie Hassel. much, Chris. How's the sound? Can people hear me all right? Yeah, great. Uh, we really, 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 really need to elect Chris Pappas to the Executive Council. So <laughs> this would be such a wonderful addition, and I would look forward to having him as a partner on the Executive Council, because as you all may know, um, the Governor of New Hampshire needs an Executive Council that she can work with in order to move the state forward. And so uh, Chris's election is critical. I'm very grateful for his help. I'm also just really grateful that he decided to run for this office. Um, thank you. I thought what I'd do, uh, you know, I, I also, I, I guess I have to back up too and just thank you for hosting us here and making the ice cream because I will tell you, um, it is really a great feeling when you send out postcards to thousands of people to know that you're advertising free ice cream that's really good. And I, you know, the Hassan team is nothing if not brilliant strategists. We have figured this out. Um, so I wanted to spend a little bit of uh, time introducing myself to all of you, why I'm running uh, what got me into politics, and then what's at stake in this election. And then we'll have time for some questions, uh, so you all can let me know what's on your mind. I got involved with politics because of my family. My mom was a high school history teacher. My dad fought in World War II. Uh, they taught us, you study hard, you stand up for what you believe in. And in particular, thanks, that's a, you can clap for that. Um, <laughs> I think my dad's experience having survived the Great Depression and then the Battle of the Bulge uh, really led him to understand that community and country was everything. And community, country, and family were everything in our household. Those lessons really resonated with my husband Tom and me as we started our own family. Our oldest son, Ben, is 24. He is a very funny and smart high school graduate. He also has very phys severe physical disabilities. He has cerebral palsy. And it didn't take Tom and me long to understand after Ben was born that if we were going to provide Ben the opportunities that all of us want to provide for our children, we were going to need a little bit of extra help. And we were lucky because here in New Hampshire, in addition to our family and our friends and our neighbors, there were uh, professionals and early intervention centers, you know, speech therapists, uh, physical therapists, and a school system that had the expertise and the resources to help us learn how to help Ben. 21 years ago this fall, a school bus pulled into our driveway in Exeter. We wheeled Ben onto the lift and up he went into the bus and off he went to his first day of preschool. And all I could think about sitting on the stoop watching the bus pull out was that if Ben had been born a generation or two earlier, we would have been pressured to put him in an institution because that's the nature and the severity of his disabilities. Instead, he was going to school in his hometown. He was going to have the opportunity to learn and the chance to make friends. And to Tom and me, this was absolutely extraordinary. To all of us, what Ben's story is also about is the story of progress in a democracy. Because the families, the individuals, the advocates, and the people who just plain listened to them and cared in generations before Tom and me paved the way so that our son could go to school in his hometown. It's the story of progress in a democracy because what we do in a democracy is bring people in from the margins into the heart and soul of our communities. That's what progress is about. After, as, as Ben's world expanded, Tom and I were able to chart our own course as a family too. We were both able to work to provide for the family. I'm a business lawyer, Tom's an educator, and eventually we made the decision to have Ben's little sister, Meg, who is 19 and she just finished her first year of college, and she's also her big brother's best friend, and I have to tell you, she is by far his most able advocate. It's really fabulous watching them together. And what we learned as a family, as Ben's family, 
is that if you work together and if you stick together, no matter what your challenges are, you can overcome them. And I'm running for governor because I want every family in New Hampshire, no matter what its challenge, to have the opportunity to succeed. And I think the best way to go at that is to really focus on our economy and in particular on making sure we have the best workforce in the country because if we do that, then innovative companies will come here, we will have the workforce to help them and they will grow and our economy will thrive and so will our state and our civic life as we move forward together. That's what this is about. In order to make that happen, in order to grow a strong innovation-based economy with the best workforce in the nation, we have to win this coming election. And you know, I know we are all used to hearing this. You know how we all say every election cycle, this is the most important election of your lifetime? <laughs> this is the most important election of your lifetime, okay? It really is. It really is. There are lots of important races up and down the ballot, and everybody should be working hard to elect good, strong, progressive leaders at every level. But I would argue that no race this cycle is more important than the New Hampshire governor's race. And the reason I say that is that both of the Republican candidates for governor have endorsed and embraced Bill O'Brien and the Tea Party legislature that he leads. This is a legislature, Ooh. yeah, good going there. <laughs> uh, this is a legislature that has put its divisive and extreme agenda ahead of the needs of middle class families. And what we know from what the Bill O'Brien legislature has done, and from what Kevin Smith and Ovid LaMontagne say they would do, we know or have at least a good idea of what we can expect if Ovid or Kevin takes the corner office. And let's just think about some of these things for a minute. They will repeal marriage equality. They will ban abortion. They will ban abortion even in the cases of rape or incest. They will eliminate coverage for basic health care for women, including birth control. Something you may not know is that Bill O'Brien and Ovid LaMontagne and Kevin Smith all have advocated for opting out of Medicare. They want the New Hampshire legislature to run health care for our seniors instead of Medicare. And we cannot let that happen. Uh, they, also, they also would eliminate our energy efficiency, our renewable energy, and our environmental protection laws. They would eliminate collective bargaining for employees in both the public and the private sector. And they would allow the state to walk away from its obligation to education altogether. And we can't let that happen either. Ovid has gone so far as to say that he wants to be Scott Walker, remember the governor in Wisconsin, on steroids. Okay. Um, and that's really important for people to understand and to know because that's not the kind of governor New Hampshire needs and it's certainly not the one we want. So that's what's at stake at this election. That's why we all have to work so hard to make sure that we don't allow the Tea Party to consolidate its power by taking the corner office. Now I'm very proud of the work that I did in the New Hampshire Senate and I'm very proud that as Senate Majority Leader, I stood up for what was right and on the side of middle class families. I have spent my life as an adult bringing people together to find common sense solutions to complicated problems. I've done that as a business lawyer, I've done that as a mother, and I did that in the State Senate. But the progress we made working with Governor Lynch is really under threat right now. In fact, a lot of it has been dismantled by this O'Brien legislature. And that's what's at stake going forward, whether they're going to continue the process of dismantling the progress we've made and go backwards even further, 
or whether we're going to be able to stop them and move forward. When they approached the budget, they cut muscle, not fat. As governor, I'm going to reinvest in our priorities, especially education and health care. I'm going to do it without a broad-based income or sales tax. And I'm going to do that because I know that we can fund our priorities without one, because I know that middle class families have gone for quite some time without a raise while their costs keep going up, and because our economy is structured around not having one. And I think it's really important that we be clear with voters about where we stand on that issue. And what I'm going to focus on is the type of work I did in the State Senate, which is finding realistic solutions to problems, and those solutions can move us forward. So even in the toughest of economic times, we were able to expand and increase funding for schools in our local communities. Even in the toughest of economic times, we expanded kindergarten statewide. And even in the toughest of economic times, we ended the wait list for people with developmental disabilities. So these are all things that we can continue to do. And during that same time period, we worked to improve the economic security of our middle class families. We increased the minimum wage for the first time in a decade. We banned predatory lending. Please realize that... Thank you for talking to that too. Payday lenders were charging New Hampshire's working families between 300 and 500 percent interest, and we put a stop to that. And even in the toughest of economic times, um, we made sure that we partnered with New Hampshire businesses and we trained 12,000 workers for new jobs or improved jobs in their, in, in their current work setting. That's a record we can all be proud of, and that's the type of progress we need to focus on. Um, I'll add here, by the way, that uh, you know this week the campaign started uh, running a couple of ads about uh, my work on education, and uh, the New Hampshire Republican Party said that education is a distraction. Oh. That I shouldn't be talking about education um, when I talked about the work we did to expand kindergarten and to lower the dropout rate. Uh, so um, I've asked the Republican Party whether they really think that education is a distraction. Um, I think the fact that they put out that press release tells us all we need to know about the Republican Party right now in New Hampshire. Um, so that is the kind of work we did together. And that's the kind of progress we need to continue to make. As I just mentioned yesterday, I released the first part of our innovation plan for the state to partner with our educators, our business people, and our workers to make sure that we really focus on this goal of having the best workforce in the country. One of the first steps and one of the first points in that plan is that we're going to restore the large funding cut that the O'Brien legislature made to the university system. Remember, they cut the university system 50%. They did, that, they did that, by the way. They did that, by the way, um, while they also cut the cigarette tax. Right? Yeah. So they might as well have said to our young people, smoke more, study less. I want to say to our young people, study hard. If you do, you'll be able to afford to go to college. And if you do, you'll get a good job. That's what I want to say to our young people. And as part of that, yeah, we're going to restore the funding to the university system. We're also going to partner with the university system to freeze tuition. Because our young people have to be able to afford to go to school. And we are losing people from New Hampshire as they're going to college somewhere else in the country because it's less expensive than our own state university system. So that's one of the things that we really need to work on. That's the type of progress we need to build together. At the end of the day, this is about whether we are going to focus on making sure that we innovate in New Hampshire, not only in the private sector, but making sure we partner with our public sector employees to innovate in government too. It's going to be about whether we move forward with good paying jobs that attract companies here and that keep our young people here. More than anything, though, this is about 
whether we're going to have the kind of government that New Hampshire has always been so proud of. You know, one of the things that I like to brag about when I'm talking to my friends in other states is that New Hampshire does democracy better than anywhere else in the world. We have 424 elected representatives. They work for a hundred bucks a year. They are citizens and volunteers who come to conquer. And with this past 18 months, as an exception, um, in, in, most, in large part, the people who serve go to Concord with the attitude that they're there to move the state forward, to solve problems, to represent their constituents as best they can. And the amazing thing is when people come to the State House in New Hampshire and they testify to a committee about an issue, they come willing to share what's important to them, what their life is really like, what they expect their legislators or their governor to do about it. And they still expect us to listen and to act. That doesn't happen in a lot of the rest of the country, folks. And it certainly isn't happening right now in Washington. So we need to move forward in practical and constructive ways to make sure, as I said, we're attracting innovative companies here and we have the strongest economy anywhere and the best workforce in the nation. But we also need to work in this election to make sure that we return our state to the kind of democracy that so many of us have been so proud of and show the rest of the country that not only can we lead our way out of the recession and through this recovery, we'll lead the country that way, but we're also going to lead the country in democracy and in self-government and in problem solving. That's my commitment to you as the next governor of New Hampshire, and I hope very much you will join the campaign. It is going great, but I need your help, I need your vote. I need your money, um, and, um, and I need you to talk to your friends. And when you do, we're all going to come together and we're going to move this state forward. So thank you very, very much for being here.